the next question is <laughs> how do you make time for bible study that's a tough one because you know everybody is different some people um are not um uh avid readers like yourself some people don't are not um a person that you know they wake up in the morning and they're trying to read a book um mm -hmm. but i i found i find ways of getting the word you know in my spirit um you can you can um watch videos of the word if that's what you some people are visual people um some people are um um they they're audio people you know they um they like to listen and I'm one of those type of people because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a music person and everything, um, uh, I, I kind of grasp things a lot better when I'm listening. Um, and then you take notes and you, you, you kind of study from that point. Um, there are different ways that you can get the word into your spirit. Um, and then what you do is you try to make somewhat of a routine of making sure you get that word into your spirit. Um, you do it, uh, it doesn't have to be, um, you know, a lot of people think that um, reading the word has to always be you um, reading the Bible. But the Bible told in, in, in uh, Joshua, God told Joshua to meditate on the word day and night. Now, come on, let's think about that. But the word meditate in, 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 the, um, in that particular scripture means to mutter. And what that means is to, to speak the word under your breath. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So you don't always have to have your Bible out reading in order for you to benefit from the word of God. Amen. So what you want to do is make sure you get scriptures and that are edifying to your spirit and you you continue to speak them into your life. And um, that is a daily bread. You, you allow the word to now govern your life. I'm realizing that people read the Bible, but they don't allow the word to govern their lives. You understand? So you don't you don't want to just read like it's some kind of novel book and just be reading. Because, you know, some people, they just read the Bible and they just read. read. They don't read the whole Bible. They, they, and they're not benefiting nothing from the Bible. Whereas you could take one verse or one chapter from the Bible and really allow it to get into your spirit and really allow it to begin to manifest itself, begin to manifest itself in your life. Um then you you'll you'll realize that the way that you're living begins to change because the information that you're taking in is different. Um, one thing that I realized, um, and I begin to teach this to my uh, my church, is that there are three different um, aspects to our walk, and the reason why a lot of people um, they don't really get the most out of their walk. Because the word of God is just one part of your life. There's the impartation, which is the word of God that you receive in your life. And then there's the revelation. The reason why most people don't get the revelation is because they never inquire to God or with God um, about opening their spirit while they're reading. They just start reading. Oh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And they memorize it. They never inquire with God. God, speak to my spirit. I open my spirit. Prepare yourself to receive the revelation of God. And then while you're receiving the revelation of God, then you say, God, now show me how to apply it to my life. You know, there are a lot of people who know the word, but they don't know how to apply it to their lives. And so when, they, when they're confronted with situations like anger, that anger overtakes them because they're, they're not in a prayerful state of mind. 
if you're in a prayerful state of mind, you will see the enemy when he's coming. You'll know that he, he's on his way. Okay, I see this enemy coming. I, I know what it is. I'm going to keep my composure. Listen, the enemy, watch this now. The enemy is more fearful of you than you are of him. The problem is, is the moment you begin to show fear, he knows that he has you at that point. Because fear is the thing that causes us to react out of character. Oh, yes, it is. You know, one person shoots another because he thinks, I'm going to be the first one to shoot. Right? It's fear. You know, I've been in many situations where um, guys wanted to, this is years ago. I don't have that problem no more. Um, <laughs> guys wanted, you know, they wanted to get at me, as the young people would say. And the Lord would show me how to deal with that spirit, even as a young person. Yes, you could do it as a young person. Yeah, you don't have to be out there hustling and tussling and fighting with people. If you learn to use wisdom, you can wisdom your way out of that situation. And I had a situation where God wanted to tear my head off. And I never lifted my hands. I just said, yo, this is not going to happen. You know, come on, dude, calm down. This is, relax. It's all right. And then the, the other thing is, is to know that the moment you begin to become aggressive, you invite that aggressive spirit into the midst of the situation. Okay? So you don't want to invite other spirits because now, like I said before, you know, when you step out of character and you let anger take over, then you step out of the favor of the guidance of, of, of the um, covering of God in your life. Amen. So you want to make sure, you know, when you read the word, you get the impartation. What was the purpose of me reading what I'm reading? You, are, you pray before you read your word. You don't just go and think that you know just because you know how to read. <laughs> you know, because we, you know, some of us are so intelligent till mm -hmm. we dumb. But the <laughs> word of God, <laughs> the word of God is it surpasses all understanding. This is why when it says in Proverbs to lean not to your own understanding, that means to let you know that you got to make sure you cancel your views out. Your idea of what's being said. And you ask God for an imp impartation of the spirit of God through the word of God. And that is the revelation. And after you get that revelation, God, I got this. I got this revelation. I got it. I think I'm ready. But Lord, now I need to know how to apply it to my life. How do I apply that word? And then he begins to give you vision. This is how he becomes the lamp to your feet and the light to your path. Because he gives you vision. He gives you vision that is way beyond the vision of the two eyes that you have. Look at God. <laughs> well, this goes into the next three questions. So they're all about Bible. They're all about Bible study and reading the Word. Um, uh -huh. So the first one is: Is there a, a right way to study the Word? Is there a right way? I mean, I pretty much kind of just told you what the right mm -hmm. way is to study the Word. The other thing is: Is you got to really be careful about certain things that you read, like. As a beginning Christian, and, and I say this, you know, um, Paul said it um, in, uh, in the New Testament. Um, you got to be careful what you read because the Old Testament is very law heavy. It is not based on grace. So if a person reads a lot of stuff in the Old Testament and hears about how God was doing this and, and doing this to the people, then you start living your life based on fear. So you got to you gotta make sure you start, I would start from the New Testament and either John um, and, and understanding Christ and Matthews and um, reading in Romans um, and those particular 
chapters before I start diving into a lot of the Old Testament. Not that you shouldn't read the Old Testament, but you should understand what the Old Testament represents before you start going into it thinking, oh my God, if I don't, if I don't wear this, then God is going to strike me down. No, the devil is a liar. You must understand that we're no longer under the law, but we're under grace. But if you start reading the law first and you let that, the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not steal, and you know you just stole something, you know what I'm saying? You'd be like, oh man, I ain't going to never be, I ain't going to never be able to do this. And then you're trying to keep the Ten Commandments that even the children of Israel could not keep. Okay? You find yourself now uh, in a situation where you don't want to read it no more. Because now it's bringing condemnation. And that's what Paul was saying. Even to this day, when people read the Old Testament, you know, the law becomes a prison to the minds of those who read it. Whew, good God. See, you need to understand that you, you, when you're reading the Old Testament, it's not that you shouldn't read it. It's just that you should know, you should understand, you should under principle, you should understand the principles of grace first. Because grace is given to us all now, and that is what we live by. We do not live by, we're not under the law, amen. Not that the law has been done away with, but it has been fulfilled in Jesus Christ, amen. That we should love God with all our soul, all our mind, all our soul, and love our neighbors as he has loved us, okay. That he was willing to give his life for us. Okay, and so love covers a multitude of sin. And so when you live your life based on love and not based on laws, um, you will find out every law will be kept based on the love that you produce. You did just mention this as far as like starting off with the Gospels, but they asked, where do you recommend a beginner to study the Bible? So would it just be like the Gospels? Well, yeah, I would, I would say, I would say learn about the love of Christ, learn about the love of God first, um, about his grace. Um, and that I, I would say in John and the other thing is, to learn about the gospel, and I would say, if you if you read um, the book of Acts, you will get a good foundation of the the gospel of Jesus Christ and and why these men uh, like Peter and and Paul they were willing to give their lives to for the gospel um, for for the experience that they encountered. Um, and that's, you know, why, you know, Jesus said that he was going to send a comforter. He kept his word. He kept his promise. And so the comforter was sent. But there's a reason why the comforter was sent. It wasn't just so that we can be comfortable in our current state, you know, but it was to bring us to the awareness of what our purpose is. Our purpose is to be witnesses of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is why we're doing this, because at some point, Somebody needs to know, you know, who Christ is, you know, and that that person that might be an unbeliever today that's saying, you know, well, you know, I, I, I grew up in church, but nobody ever said anything to me about receiving Christ. Um, you know, you have an opportunity now to, um, you know, even if you go to your word and you, you begin to read about the love of God. And just John three sixteen alone lets you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. If you desire to walk in that everlasting life, receive Christ in your life today. Amen. Amen. The next question is, how do you stay motivated to read the Bible daily? Um, uh, motivation is an emotion. I stay motivated to read my word knowing that if I don't 
um, I would be forced into motivation. <laughs> 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 you know, that, you know, because reading your word, I see, years ago, when, when I first started, you know, uh, I didn't understand the importance and the potency of the word of God. But once you begin to understand and see the word of God beginning to change your life, change your way of thinking, you want more. And, it, and, it, and it's just like the word just gets good in your spirit. And you'll find yourself everywhere you're going, you're trying to get more word in you. See, the reason why the word doesn't motivate most people, it goes back to if you're not doing the thing that you were called to do, then there's really no motivate. There's nothing to motivate you. You understand what I'm saying? I give you for instance. Um, if if I'm never really uh, uh, trying to uh, build a car, then I'll never go and get or go to class for building a car. Okay. If I'm never really trying to be a witness then I'm never really going to the Bible to find out what I need to know to be able to witness. So there's your personal devotion with your reading, but there's also your defense mechanism devotion because you want to know what you're talking about. You want to be able to say and understand what you believe. And you can only do that by getting into the word of God and allowing the word of God to now be the impartation in your life so that when you begin to open your mouth and speak, like I'm speaking on this day, amen, uh, you can speak from a place of revelation because the, your eyes have been opened, okay? Your spiritual eye will never be open as long as you're being governed by the old ideas that you were taught as a young child. So you got to understand the importance of reading the word. It's not just so that you can... Um, say that you read the Bible, but I'm reading the word because I want to be ready for when there are questions asked to me as to why do I believe? Why am I Christian? Why am I walking this walk? Because if a person comes to you and they begin to challenge your beliefs, your belief system, and you don't have a good enough answer, you will begin to doubt yourself. And also begin to doubt Christ. So it's important that you you build an offense, okay? And that is with the word of God to say so that you can defend the faith, okay? Many people are not defending the faith because, and they don't say much because they don't have enough word on the inside of them. But when you get that word inside of you and a person comes and they say, this is what the Bible says, or this is what, um, uh, what you believe is not correct. You have a you have a place of reference to 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 um say you know this is why I believe what I believe. Um, the Bible says faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You have to you have to hear this word in your spirit in order for your faith to increase. I'm gonna say that again. If you don't hear the word then your faith will remain stagnant in a certain place. This is the reason why when um, when, when uh, Peter began to walk to Christ from the boat, okay, while Christ was walking on the water, when he stepped out on faith to walk to Christ, but the reality is he did not get all the way to Christ. You know why? Because his faith wasn't at the place that it needed to be in order to reach Christ. But Christ didn't get mad at him. He said, listen, O ye of little faith. But guess what? In later scripture, he said, well, when your faith, right, when you get to that place where you are converted, because there's a conversion that takes place in every believer's life. When you are converted, then you can be able to turn around and strengthen the brethren. What am I saying? When you get to that place with God to where there is no point of return, that you understand that this is it. I know who Christ is. I understand why I'm serving. I understand my mission in Christ. I understand my purpose now in Christ. Now I have able to turn around and strengthen my brethren. 
this is where your faith has grown from just being this mustard seed faith into being a mustard seed tree. See, a lot of people think that mustard seed faith means you only have to have a little bit of faith because a mustard seed is something that you can't really see. But mustard seed faith just means that if you plant that which you have, it will grow into a mustard seed tree. I don't know if you've ever seen a mustard seed tree, but a mustard seed tree is very large, okay? And so the purpose of getting the word in your spirit, because every time that seed of word gets into you, it's now growing and it's now manifesting itself in every area of your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, I'm going to pull this question off of YouTube. This one says, what can a person do when they feel as if they missed their destiny, and is there such a thing? What can a person do if they feel like they missed their destiny? Mm -hmm. And is there such a thing? Well, let's think about what destiny means. Destiny means your end. How do you miss your end? Or uh, Now, I understand what they're probably trying to say. If you miss what you were purposed to do, well, mm -hmm. you can change today. See, a lot of times people think, well, I'm getting too old, you know, or I'm too old now. You know, I, I think I've kind of messed up, you know, my whole life. So there's no sense in me. I'm 50 years old now. There's no sense in me trying to change now. No change as long as you're living as long as you have breath in your body change is always profitable okay you can always profit from change change especially when you're dealing with your soul okay because we're not talking about we're not talking about getting from um high school to to um to college we're talking about getting from life to death to live again, okay, to eventually get to eternal life. That is your destiny, and that is your final destination is eternal life. And we're all going to spend eternal life somewhere, right? So there is no, I, I miss my destiny. No, what, you, what the enemy has tried to tell you is that you've missed your destiny, that you've missed your purpose, and there's no reason to continue to, um, uh, serve and there's no there's no need to continue um, to um, walk in the ways of God. The devil is a liar because you could be 99 years old and still live to be 112. Right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, every person must must understand your destiny and your destination is never is never um for is never um out of reach you can forfeit your purpose by not walking in the will of god but every one of us have been given the opportunity to change and that seems to be one of the hardest things for not just women but men because when you get seared in your brain and seared in your mind um you know, the way that you're living and you allow that lifestyle to become your destination where you're just going to rest your whole life on, then so be it. And, and you find yourself um, stagnant, stagnant, stagnant for the rest of your life. Um, there are a lot of men today that are struggling, trying to find their way to God, right? But they don't want to give up their idea of who God is. So, because in their mind, God is just this supreme being that's up in the sky. But <laughs> God dwells within us and he wants us to give over our rights to God when he says, um, I present my body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. This is your reasonable. You have to understand that 
in order to benefit from the things of God, you have to be able to, you have to be willing to sacrifice yourself, your ideas, your thoughts. You know, when, I, I mean, I've been, a, I've been in church all my life, but it wasn't until I decided that I was going to turn my life over to God that I was going to turn my mind over to God, did my life begin to change? Certain changes are not going to take place until you change your mind about God. That's what repentance is, is all about. And people don't talk about repentance anymore because repentance means you have to reevaluate yourself and the life that you're living and realize that the life that you're living is leading you in the wrong direction. But when you repent, you don't just say, I'm sorry but you change directions. So that which I was pursuing, that which I was doing, I realized I'm changing my direction towards those things. And now I'm facing towards God. I'm, you know, the reality is, is that we go towards the direction we are facing. And my question would be is, are you, face, are you facing Christ? Is your mind focused on God? Is your mind focused on the things of God? Is your mind, you, you know, it's just like now we're answering questions, but after you get the impartation, will you receive the revelation and say, you know what, I'm going to try it. I'm going to apply it to my life. I'm going to try to do this thing that the man of God is saying, and I'm going to see if it's going to work. You know, but the first thing is I gotta first I gotta first admit the system by which I was living wasn't working. Cause some people think they're okay. People some people think that they're all right. And this is the reason why they have a hard time changing. Because they're like, you know, it's all good. You know, you know, me and my me and my um my girlfriend, we you know, it, it, it's no big deal that, you know. We, 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 we are shacking up or whatever the case may be. It's no big deal, right? Because they feel that nothing has happened. They're, they, they, they're having a good life. They're getting along with each other. But you got to know in the word of God that it says that there's certain things that as a believer, as a Christian, we're not supposed to do. Because it not only defiles the body, but it defiles the relationship that you have with God. And when you begin to get into the word and go into Corinthians where it talks about um, fleeing fornication and fleeing these things and what's happening because the body, when you get with another person, you become one with that person. And now you have taken yourself out of the, the realm of the spirit and you now dwelling in the realm of the flesh. Those are things that if, if you don't read it, then it will never become a become something that you begin to govern your life by. You know, there's some certain people who are Christians right now are bent backwards off of, of, of never getting married again, right? Uh, but they want to continue to have intercourse. But if you don't read what that's going to, what the results of that is going to get you, right? You would think that it's okay. Well, you know, I can't, you know, I can't, I could do bad all by myself. Yeah, you can go to hell all by yourself too. <laughs> <laughs> is it true? I mean, come on, let's think about it. People mm -hmm. say the stupidest stuff. I could do bad all by myself. I'm not gonna, yeah, well, you know, hell is filled with a lot of people who went by themselves. They didn't go with a group. <laughs> right? Heaven is yeah. filled with people who went by themselves. You know, so we, we got to be, you know, honest with ourselves when it comes to our walk with Christ. Mm -hmm.